Hi, I'm Bart Taylor, and with me today is Matt Walkins from Future Solutions. Hi, Matt. Hi, Bart. <laughs> hey, what was that? <laughs> Today we have a Cougar with us with the Solar Flex Package 600 IL, and Matt's going to walk us through how to operate it and how to use it. Matt, tell us about yourself. So my name is Matt Walkins. I've been with a company called Future Solutions for about eight years. Uh, we started with the solar energy groups and the boondocking and off-grid, uh, just trying to get customers out of the parks. Uh, we knew park space was was getting harder to get and customers just wanted to be able to go out and use their unit as if it were plugged in while they were out boondocking. So that's kind of what got me started into it. I found it fascinating to run everything off of lithium batteries and as the technology's progressed with that, it's become a lot more user friendly, so. All right, well, let's take a look at this 600 and you can show us how to operate it. So this is a 600i L fifth wheel. So on your fifth wheels, the entire system is going to be up front in this front storage area. If you've got a travel trailer, this stuff's going to be in a front pass-through. So everything hooks up the same. It's just going to be laid out in a different form on a travel trailer than it is on a fifth wheel. So if I'm going to start in here, I've got to open this compartment up. And then this is my 600 IL system. So the first thing I need to do is I need to turn on the battery disconnect for the coach. So then that gives you 12 volt power to the entire coach. That's, that's your main disconnect instead of having what you used to have in your wet bay on the side of the unit. Next thing I need to do is I need to turn my inverter on. So this is the inverter disconnect. This provides 12 volt power from the batteries down here to the inverter up here. Last thing I need to do is actually turn the inverter on. There's a switch on the top. And basically, as soon as I click that on, I will have power to the inverter. Once you hear the click and you see the lights come on, now I have AC power, or 120 volt, to the rest of the wired outlets for this and to the air conditioner. So Matt, now that we got our 600 turned on with what you've just shown us, is the system operating and ready to use? Yes, so that's all we needed to do. We've now got 120 volt power inside the coach. We've also got DC power inside the coach. Okay, Matt, I understand there's an app or something we use with SolarFlex? Yes, so there is a Victron Connect app that you'll need to download. And what you'll do then after you download that app is you will look for the devices that you have in your coach. So on each 600i, whether it be a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, there is going to be a component list right here. So this will tell me the Solar Charger 1, that's the serial number for it. That's the device name that's going to come up on your app. Here's your shunt, and then you also have a servo. If you scan this code right in here, it will tell you how to set up the Wi-Fi network for your servo so you can find your Wi-Fi service. So when you search your device list, if you don't see the devices on there on your phone, your batteries are most likely in protection mode or asleep, and you'll need to go through the process of waking up your lithium batteries. Okay, so I'm inside the coach. We're running completely off a of battery. We're not plugged in at all. So you can see at this particular time, I'm at about 83% charged. I've got 18 hours remaining and I'm drawing 203 watts, which I'm running a refrigerator plus all the interior lights that are in here. Now, if I come up here and I wanna run the slide outs out, so I'll go to my in command, slides, uh, kitchen slide, sofa dinette table slide, run it out. You can see the wattage changing. At 300, now I'm at 350, so I'm using basically 140 watts to run this slide out out. As soon as this gets all the way out, I'll stop it. You'll see that draw go from negative 350 to probably negative 200. So we'll let her stop. There we go. Drops down to about 200 watts. If I want to run the kitchen slide out, obviously I hit the kitchen slide. And out we go. 
It's a different mechanism, but you still see there you're running negative 360-ish watts, something like that. So again, it takes about 150 watts to run these slide out in this particular unit out. And you'll see if you look at the bottom, my time remaining is changing because I'm using up energy. So there, we're done. Now that draw goes away. This actually starts to creep back up a little bit because I'm not using as much power. On a 600i, you've also got an air conditioner that's gonna be run off of your battery bank. So I'm in here, I'm in my in command, I found the AC, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. I'm gonna set it on cool. It's 88 degrees in here. So you'll see the fan's gonna kick on first. There's my wattage jumped up around 500. Then the air conditioner's gonna kick on. You're gonna see a large jump in amps here and watts here. Now, there it goes. So now, I'm pulling 100 amps off of that battery. I'm using 1,330 watts, and you can see how my time remaining is dropping. So basically, with lithium batteries, it's math. If I've got 3,000 watts of battery available, and I'm using 1,000 watts, I can run it for about three hours. And that's the way lithium works. You need to be cognizant of what your draws are so that you're not running your batteries out. If I run, and now if I go turn on a hair dryer, or I try to run, you know, the TV, all that stuff's gonna add up and it's gonna decrease this run time. So right now, you see we've dropped from 83 to 82%. Our voltage is dropping. That voltage looks lower than it actually is because the amount of current we're drawing right now is, give, is pulling that number down. And that's why we have three hours and 11 minutes of air conditioner time left, so. All right, so BART is gonna go plug the unit in and you're gonna watch what happens when the inverter switches from inverting to charging. So we're on 1600 watts of negative. I've got about two hours left. Bart, did you plug it in? Bart plugged it in so there's a little delay as it qualifies the power. So there's always a delay because it wants to make sure it's got good energy coming in. So we should see this charger click over and what happens is there it goes. It just dropped to negative 95 watts. Now I'm at 700, 900 as it goes up. And what we end up with now is you'll watch this 82%, see my voltage come up? These numbers are all positive, it's because I'm charging. And so what's happening now is I'm using the energy off the shore power to charge the batteries while the air conditioner never shut off at that whole point, so we're still running. So, And that's how you know when you see positive numbers here, you're in a, you're in a state of charge. So Matt, thanks for the walkthrough. Can you just give us an outline of what components come on a 600 IL? Sure. So on a 600 IL, we've got 600 watts of solar. There's two 300 watt panels. We have an extra docking port in case you want to upgrade another, put an additional 600 watts on later. There is a single GC3 Dragonfly Energy battery. It's 270 amp hours. There is a Victron 3000 watt MultiPlus inverter. There is a 50 amp Victron smart solar solar charger and the provisions to put an extra charger on should you add extra solar. Um, you also have a Victron smart shunt, which is what you saw in the app, which kind of gives you an overview of your battery health and what's going on, um, as well as what's called a battery guardian, which is a device that protects your batteries should you leave it running and you walk away um, and they get down to 11.6, it will turn itself off and keep you from running the batteries down critically low. So Matt, can I run my AC off of the solar on this unit? Actually, no, the solar doesn't run anything. The solar charges the battery, it's the inverter that runs your air conditioner in your seven, up to seven outlets. So that's something that solar gets a lot of the credit because you're using green energy from the sun, but if you don't have all three components kind of e evenly uh, distributed, you're not gonna have a good solar system. So by having a 3000 watt inverter, a 270 amp hour battery bank and 600 watts of solar, yes, you can run your air conditioner. But if I were missing any of those three components, I wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, thanks, Matt. Uh, that actually cleared that up for me a little bit. So along with the, the points you've just made, it's obvious that the sun shining continuously is gonna have an effect on its ability to charge our bank of batteries. Right, absolutely. So a good way to think about it, a more common way to think about it is your battery bank is your fuel tank in your car. Your inverter is the engine in the drivetrain that's running everything. And the solar panels are a gas pump at a filling station that helps you fill up that battery bank. So as long as I've got sun out 
and you'll see it when you look at your shunt, that number you're getting is a net number. So if you look at that, you run that air conditioner at night versus you running it during the daytime, you're gonna see the difference how the solar power coming in from the sun will extend the life and the runtime of that stuff. So you, you've got to, if I'm perhaps, let's say I'm, I've got a 500 watt draw that happens all the time. At night, I'm just gonna be pulling 500 watts out of my battery. When the sun comes up and I'm putting 600 watts in, now I've got an extra 100 watts to play with. So I'm charging my battery and that load is continuing to run. So that's what solar is doing for you. All right, thank you. So it's, it's my responsibility to pay attention to what I'm using. Do I need to be using it? So I need to make good energy consumption decisions to help my solar be as efficient as possible to run as long as possible. Absolutely, it's, it's no different than driving your car and watching that you know, guessing on how far you can go if you're on E, you know, do I really want to keep pushing it or do I want to get to a gas station and get filled up? That's how you turn your loads off is how you create more energy. So. All right. Thanks, Matt. That's good to know. So Matt, talk to me a little bit about clouds, sunshine, where I park, trees and campgrounds. What's some things I need to uh, keep in mind when I camp? Right. So obviously shade is going to affect how much sun that you get. Now, Everything that Keystone does is in parallel. So if one panel is shaded, it doesn't really have much of an effect on the other panel as opposed to being in a series format. But you still gotta be cognizant of where you are and where you're parked and how much energy you're gonna get into it. We also use all monocrystalline panels. So they're a little bit more efficient. They wake up a little bit earlier. They catch a little more sun in that 9, 10, 11 o'clock range. Um, and they also give you a little bit more sun in the evenings. Most of your sun production, this depends on where you live, so it, you can look up charts online. We're in northern Indiana, which is a horrible place for sun because we've got a lake right over here that just blocks everything and in the winter we get nothing but snow. So we get at best, they'll call it three peak hours of sun every day. Now obviously you got sun that comes up at nine o'clock in the morning, but that's not peak. And you've got sun still up at now since daylight savings time at 9.30 at night. So we're not getting our, our best energy there, but we're getting something coming in. So. If you're in Arizona, that time, that peak sun is probably six, six and a half hours. If it's in that Lake Havasu area, it's, yeah, I think it may be even closer to seven hours of time. So where you're at, the closer you are to the equator, the better you're off as far as sun that you're gonna get. Remember the panels are basically flat on the roof. And so you get peak sun when that sun is at its highest position. So Matt, um, I have the 600 system. I love it, it's working great. What maintenance is there for me? So for the batteries, for the inverter, there's other than just keeping the storage area clean and maybe not having stuff packed around it, there's not much that you're gonna be able to do there. As far as the panels go, obviously you guys know about sealing your roof and checking your roof seals and that sort of stuff. On a solar panel, there's a couple things you don't wanna do. You don't wanna use uh, heavy like dish soaps and stuff like that because they're gonna attract dust after you've already cleaned the panel. The other thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna hit a hot panel with cold water off of the hose because you're gonna crack that panel. It is glass and they carry a, they will be at a much higher temperature than the ambient air around you. You know, that panel could be 175 to 200 degrees if you're in Arizona in direct sunlight and spraying it with 50 degree hose water is gonna cause damage and micro cracks and stuff like that in the solar panel. So basically in the evening when it's cooled off a little bit, hit it with water. I wipe them down, I have a rag and wipe mine down with a rag and just that's about it. There, you know, don't, not a lot of solvents or cleaners, any of that stuff. Yeah, it, it may sound like a great idea, but it's just you're gonna cover that thing with dust sooner if you have a, those films on there. Matt, can I expand my battery bank? Yes, yeah, you can. So you saw the, the battery system that was in there earlier, the rack. It's actually designed to hold a second battery and it'll just slide right in. Two small jumper cables that you can get from Keystone and you've essentially doubled your battery bank. If you wanna increase your solar panels, Keystone has included a second docking port on the roof. That docking port will hold another 30 amps worth of power. Now, obviously there's amps times volts equals watts, but it's easily designed for another 600 watts. There's also a spot underneath the cover there for a second 50 amp charger. All the screws are included. The wiring's already included. It's just simply ordering that charger from you guys, sticking it on there and hooking up the wires. And then it'll populate itself. It'll show up on your app as another device and you can link it in. So it sounds like for any of the SolarFlex 200, 400, 600, I have expandability. I would just need to visit my dealer 
to get pricing options to expand to the next next level yep. and do more with solar. So Matt, what do I do when I want to put my unit up for long-term storage? Okay, so what you should do is charge your batteries up, okay? And then you're gonna go back to those two disconnect switches that we saw earlier. So you're gonna shut your inverter off. Up on the top, you'll see the lights go out. You're gonna turn off your inverter disconnect, which is the big red disconnect in there that's marked inverter disconnect. And then you're gonna kill the house power in there, which is your 12 volt disconnect up on the top of the screen. Once those are done, the lithium batteries will stay just fine. You're not actually disconnecting the solar. So the solar, when the temperature's right, is still gonna work and is still gonna charge the batteries um, and should maintain them while it's in storage. Uh, but you're, you've now shut off the vast majority of your parasitic loads so the unit is safe to store. Okay, so while in storage, uh, instead of coming back in the spring to dead lead acid, with a solar system, I'll have fully charged lithium or lead acid ready to go. Yeah. Yep. Great, that's a nice feature. Is there any considerations if it's cold when I'm camping, like I wanna go on a ski trip or something? Sure, there's a, there's a lot of information about lithium and there's a lot of questionable in information about lithium on the internet. So these batteries have internal heat. So there is a switch inside the coach for turning heat on. Lithium batteries will go ahead and discharge. In other words, you can keep running things all the way down way below freezing and they'll keep running. What they won't do is they won't charge. So you'll find yourself, if you're plugged into shore power and, and let's say, and we're talking cold, I mean the inside of that battery has got to get down below freezing. For that to happen, you'll need to turn on your interior, your, turn on your battery heat and then they'll warm up, they consume their own energy inside and then they'll allow the solar panels or the shore power to charge. I don't know how often people are camping in conditions that it's going to be that cold inside that particular compartment or in a travel trailer when you're, it's in the pass-through, how often you're going to be in something where your interior your coach is below freezing. But the, these units do have heated batteries and it's an internal heat source, so it's an advantage compared to a lot of other stuff that's out there. All right, so Matt, final question, we'll wrap this segment up. Um, just so I'm clear, energy consumption. Is it true I can do anything I want to do whenever I want to do it just because I bought solar? No, no, that's not. You have to be aware of the power that you're using. You have a limited battery bank. Now it's a greater battery bank than most of what you're gonna find out there, but you still are gonna use power when you're running an air conditioner, when you're got the hair dryer plugged in, when you're partying it up and you got all the lights and the stereo and everything running, all of that consumes energy. And so you have to watch that, watch that shunt, watch that app, keep an eye on your battery bank and make sure you don't put yourself in a situation where when the batteries go dead, you don't have a way to charge them. If you found this video interesting, hit that like button. And if you have a suggestion for another video, leave us a note below. Where's my lovely assistant? I've done this whole video. Thanks for watching.